Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. This is the second video for today. The first one premiered, if I can wake up at that point. I'll schedule it, but I'll try to premiere as well. Uh, about two hours ago, uh, it must have been uh, public. So go ahead and check it out. Uh, it was about a rational equation, and we're gonna be using a similar idea for this problem. So hopefully you'll get to um, see the same method uh, more than once. So we have this radical equation, and what is typical about radical equations? We square both sides, right? Obviously we do want to get rid of radicals. So let's go ahead and do that first as our first method. So first method, square both sides. The outer square root is gonna disappear and we're gonna end up with something like this. And you wanna square both sides again, but you don't wanna do it like this because that would give you more radicals. To get rid of the radicals as soon as possible, as quickly as possible, we should isolate the radical first and then square both sides, make sense? Uh, I mean, you can square like this too, but at some point you're gonna have to isolate it. Now here we get x minus one, cool. And this gives us x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. We get x to the fourth plus two x squared minus x plus one plus one plus two equals zero. Uh-oh, this kind of looks factorable, isn't it? Let's give it a try. I think we can factor this by grouping, can't we? For example, I kind of want to put these two terms together because they both have two. So maybe I can split it up like this, separate them. And now x factor out, x cubed minus one, two factor out, x squared plus one. Uh-oh, our method failed, but at least we tried. So that doesn't work. Maybe I should just consider these terms. Nope, that's not gonna work either. So unfortunately, there's no way you can factor by grouping. So what should we do? Use the quartic formula. You know how complicated that is? That's quite complicated, but we can definitely do something instead of using the a giant, uh, gigantic formula. If you want to see how gigantic that is, just uh, search uh, in Wikipedia. Uh, it's huge. It's amazing. And there's no quintic formula because even if it existed, it would probably take several hundred uh, pages. But it doesn't exist. Just to be uh, on the safe side, let me just say that. Now, how can we solve this problem? Uh, let's put these two on the left and everything else on the right. Now, our goal is going to be the following. We want to make this a perfect square. And we can do so by adding one to the left hand side. Because if you add one here, you get x squared plus one squared, which you knew, right? Because that's where it comes from. Great. Now, we're going to go ahead and add one here as well, x minus one. So it's kind of, kind of bringing us to square one, but don't worry, we're going to do things a little differently. Now, the left hand side is a perfect square, and that's perfect, but the right-hand side isn't. It's not even quadratic. We want a quadratic, so let's add something quadratic. But while adding something quadratic, we still want to keep the left-hand side as a perfect square. Is that possible? Absolutely. That is the very method that we're going to use. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and add 2k times x squared plus 1 plus k squared to both sides. And notice that uh, that's going to work. And on the right-hand side, of course, we have the same thing at 2k times x squared plus 1 plus k squared. And yes, we made it quadratic. Nice. So let's go ahead and write the left-hand side as a perfect square. So this is like y, and don't ask why. If this is y, you get y squared plus 2ky plus k squared, which is y plus k squared. But k is x squared plus 1. In other words, this is x squared plus 1 plus k quantity squared that comes from here hopefully you see that and on the right hand side let's go ahead and rearrange these terms 2k x squared and then i have the plus x and then i have the constants which is 2k plus k squared minus one now here's the trick the left hand side is a perfect square the right hand side should also be a perfect square so discriminant delta needs to be zero right that's a quadratic easy but you can do that but that's going to give you a cubic equation so we kind of depress the equation and get a cubic because we're um, going from a quartic to a cubic and then from a cubic you can go to a quadratic. But if you start with a quintic, you can't reduce the degree, unfortunately, and there's a really good reason behind it and there's a huge theory behind it. At the impossibility theorem and, you know, Galois, Abel, some people call him Abel, I think he's Norwegian, 
Anyways, you get the idea. So delta, let's find out what that looks like. Negative b, negative b, plus minus the square root. Oops, I'm sorry, I got stuck at the quadratic formula. Delta is b squared minus 4ac. Okay, let me write that so I can clear my mind. b squared minus 4ac. Okay, you gotta be careful, uh, this is c, okay? The whole thing, this constant with respect to x. Cool, cool. This is supposed to be zero, so the left-hand side I mean, the, this, this piece is going to be on the right-hand side and then the left-hand side. In other words, this is what I'm trying to say. In plain English, this should equal 1. Get that? Now, go ahead and distribute 8k cubed plus 16k squared minus 8k minus 1 equals 0. And then now you need to solve a cubic. Or you can use the rational root theorem, divisors of 1 divided by divisors of 8, all possibilities, kind of like plus minus 1. And then at the bottom, you're going to have plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, plus minus 8. The rational root theorem tells us that it's probably going to be a fraction because 1 doesn't work. Negative 1 doesn't work, does it? I don't think so. Okay, evens and odds, they don't work. So it must be something like plus minus 1 half or plus minus 1 fourth or plus minus 1 eighth or maybe one of those. Anyway, something like that. So do you think you can guess? You know, there's a couple different ways to go about it. You can write this as 2k cubed and then set 2k equal to something else so that you can have a rational um, or integer constant term. But don't worry too much about it. I think one of these values will work. And once you get the k value, you can figure it out. But let me tell you something. There's probably an easier way to do it. You want this to be a perfect square. And could this be 1 or 4 or 9? And 4 doesn't make sense because that would mean k equals 2. But as we know, k equals 2 is not going to work from rational root theorem, right? Take a look at that. So it's possibly that 2k equals 1 and k equals 1 half. Let's just test it out real quick, shall we? If k is equal to 1 half, what happens? If k is 1 half, we get x squared and then plus x. And then here, 1 fourth plus 1 half times 2 is 1 minus 1. This is 1 fourth. Perfect. That is just a perfect square. Isn't that amazing? Yes, I know what you're thinking. That doesn't look like 1, but it is. Look, this is what we got. But for k equals 1 half, we got x squared plus, by the way, this is 1 half. So it's going to be 3 over 2 squared equals x plus 1 half squared. And guess what? From here, you do get two equations. You can set this equal to x plus 1 half. And then the opposite of the right-hand side which is negative x minus one half. And from here, you get two quadratic equations, four solutions that would give you a quartic. Make sense? You get the idea. Hopefully you can do the rest. I'm going to leave it as an exercise. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second method, which is kind of like my favorite, but again, it's for you to decide. So we have this equation. Have you noticed that there's something special about this type of problem, disease type of these types of problems? And I told you we use the same method uh, for my first video today. Make sure to check it out. And also I have a channel on complex numbers, A plus B, I also make sure to check it out. Okay, so we're going to use substitution. So let's go ahead and maybe call this Y. And there's a couple different options. Like I could call the whole thing, but this is better. You're going to see in a little bit Y. And Y becomes square root of X minus 1. And by setting it equal to that, X becomes square root of y minus 1. Do you see that? This is y minus 1 square root of that equals x. You get the idea? Okay. It's kind of hard to see, but hopefully you can see that. We're getting two things from one thing by using substitution, which is a system. And obviously, you can square both sides, being careful with the domains. And then you should probably just uh, subtract side by side. In other words, negate the second one and subtract, negate, negate, negate. And add, I mean negate and add, I should, I should, I'm, I was trying to say that. Once cancel out. And now we can put this on the left. This becomes y plus x times y minus x. This becomes y minus x. I mean, let me subtract x minus y, so it's gonna be plus y minus x. Yes, it's gonna be the opposite, right? Equals zero. There's a one here. So if you factor out y minus x, you get y plus x plus one equals zero. Now remember, y is equal to what? Hmm, that's a good question. I think uh, y x equals y x squared equals y minus 1. So y is equal to x squared plus 1. Good. So let's go ahead and replace. From here we get y equals x. 
And if y is equal to x squared plus 1, x squared plus 1 equals x, and then you get x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. We're going to get to that. Let's go ahead and look at the other solution. If y plus x is negative 1, and if y is x squared plus 1, x squared plus 1 plus x equals negative 1, we get x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. Uh-oh, we're getting complex solutions from here. Even though this channel isn't about complex numbers because I have a plus bi, which is all about complex numbers, just complex numbers sometimes just come up. Use the quadratic formula and then find out which solutions will work. Are they all going to work? Because this looks like a cortic, and we kind of found a cortic with the first method, right? And now let's go ahead and check out if I don't forget to include. Yes. This is why we have complex solutions. These two curves do not intersect. One of them is a radical that starts at 2y because of the domain. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.